Hey guys, welcome back to the third video of the SciPy tutorial series. In this video, I'll be showing you how to implement the k means clustering algorithm in SciPy. So, first, we need to import a few libraries. So, first, we'll be importing numpy. Next, we'll be importing map.lib. And finally, we need to import the k means algorithm. So, from scipy.cluster, which is the sub package that we'll be using, .vq will import k means 2. So, in SciPy, there are two implementations of the k-means algorithm there is k-means and k-means2 k-means2 is the newer version and it's more convenient to use so i'll be using k-means2 so now we need to generate a data set to test this algorithm on so i made three arrays a b and c and i'm randomly generating two dimensional points so these points are ge uh, generated from a normal distribution with the average position of 0, 0,6 and there are 200 points in A. Similarly, there are 400 points in B and the average position of those 400 points will be 2,0 and then there are 250 points in C with average position of 6,4. So again, the points are sampled from a normal distribution. So after generating these points, I will put them into a single array Z. So that will be our main data set using the np.concatenate function. Then I'll mix up all the data points in Z and we'll plot out all the data points. So here you can see a graph of the data points generated and you can see that there are a few clusters. So the first cluster will probably be at the top left corner. Next there will be one near towards the right and find there will be one towards the bottom left. Alright, so these are the clusters roughly and what we're trying to do is that we just want to make sure we categorize all the data points into different clusters. So again, the important part is that there will be three clusters in this data set. Okay, so K means, so the way the K means algorithm works is that first you have K and K is the number of clusters. So by looking at the graph, we know that K should be three. So K here is three. So next is the term centroids. So what centroids is, is that we'll have three clusters. So the first cluster will be over here at the top left corner. And the average position of the data points is the centroid. So the next cluster is over here. So the centroid will be somewhere in center over here which will be the average position of all the data points and the third centroid will be somewhere here at the middle which is the average position of all the data points over here so we have three centroids in total which is basically the center of our clusters so what you're trying to do in k-means clustering is that we first randomly generate the positions of the centroids then we find the Euclidean distance between each data point with each centroid. Then we pair, we categorize the data point with the centroid that is closest to it. All right, and then once we do that, then the centroid positions are adjusted such that the Euclidean distances are minimized all right when the distances are minimized that's when we have successfully clustered our data so that's the internal implementation that scipy will take care of so we don't have to worry too much about that so this is the main line of code so first k means 2 is actually a function so the first argument is the data set z so Z is an array of two-dimensional points. In fact, you can have three-dimensional points or four-dimensional points as well, but I'm using two-dimensional points, so yeah. 
The second argument should be a number, which is k. So k is 3, since there will be 3 clusters. And this is the method of initialization. So the method of initialization that I'll be using is points. Uh, there are other methods as well, such as random. You can check that out later. And what the function returns is the positions of the centroids. So this is the list of all the centroids that we have and labels. So I'll just explain labels in just a second. So let's just run the code first. Okay, I'll comment these two lines because I don't want to see the graph anymore. Okay. Okay, so first is the centroids. So again, we have three centroids over here because we have three clusters. And here is our data set, all right, data set Z. And the labels, so here you can see the label is one. So what does that mean? So first we'll go to Z. In fact, let me print this as a F string. Okay, so here we have Z. So we have the label 2. And that corresponds to this data point over here. So that data point has the label 2. So what does 2 even mean? Let's go to centroids. So the so this element here it has the index 2. So this data point with the label 2 is closest to this centroid over here all right so that's what labels is so another point another label is zero so that corresponds to this position here of z and since the point is zero this point is closest to the first centroid which is this all right so again, zero corresponds to the first centroid. So essentially, the position of the label corresponds to the position of the data point, and the numerical value of the label corresponds to the index position of the centroid. Okay, so next we want to categorize the data points in Z into smaller arrays. So here you can see that my three arrays are cluster one, cluster two, cluster three. And I use something called Boolean indexing. So all the data points in Z, which correspond to a label that is equal to zero, will be put into cluster one. And all the points which correspond to a label of one, like this, will be put into cluster 2 and then the same for cluster 3. So Boolean indexing makes that very, very simple. And I actually have a video on Boolean indexing and I'll make a YouTube card appear so that you can check that out. And finally, we want to plot it out to, you know, check if the k-means algorithm is working correctly. So let's just uncomment that. So again, the way matplotlib works is that you need to first put the x values followed by the y values. And then I just put a label there as well. So this is the x values, y values, and the label. And then I also plot the centroids, the x values of the centroids, the y value of the centroids. I put the label centroids. And then the color of the centroids will be black. All right, so let's just. Okay, so we again got the terminal output. And um, one more thing is that since line 23, 24, and 25, we plotted different, we plotted in different lines, by default, we'll get different colors. 
so you can change the colors if you like but I'll be using the default so here you can see that the k-means algorithm has categorized our data into clusters so the data at the top left corner it has the color orange then at towards the right is green and towards the bottom is blue so so you can see that SciPy has successfully categorized our data into clusters and remember that the k-means algorithm also works for more dimensions so we only use two dimensional data over here but in this line here z you can put in three dimensional data you can put in four dimensional data you can put in 10 dimensional data and uh, remember that it should be a two dimensional numpy array for it to work and yeah so yeah you can apply it to three dimensional points or more so i use two dimensional points to make it simple and the final result is this and you can see that scipy made it very easy to implement k-means clustering so yeah if you like this video then please consider giving a like and subscribe and i'll see you in another video